Hi everybody, Al Rochelle here with this portion of the PCS Journal where we sit down and chat with folks within Pinellas County Schools, what they do. You need to pay attention today because we are talking about choices abound. It's that time of year when you have to apply and figure out which of the 70 choices or more you want to talk about. Melissa Campbell joining me right now, Pinellas County Schools District Application Program Specialist. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. I always worry about choice. <laughs> <laughs> because there are so many choices that people have. So, I mean, I must where to begin. So let's talk about for people who, who are just in school for the first time and they're saying, well, what is all this choice stuff? What is it? Well, choice is what we call um, the opportunity for families to entertain a fundamental magnet career academy that might interest their child that's outside of their zoned school. It gives them an opportunity to see one of many different curriculum opportunities. We mm -hmm. have choices in... STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, we do have fundamental programs. We have programs in arts, um, communications, and um, we even have programs, career programs at high school where students can earn uh, career certifications. Yeah, certifications, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And things like finance, um, technology, Microsoft, Adobe. The, the choices are amazing. Which is why you need a copy of this. You need one of these books, okay? Yes. How do they get one of these books? Um, those should have come home with our fifth and eighth grade students okay. and, um, and back in October. So if mom or dad didn't find those yet, mm -hmm. um, if you contact our student assignment office, we'll help you out with that. So when you talk about applying, what grades does this primarily affect? Well, you, obviously you said mm -hmm. fifth grade and eighth grade. What, right. about, what about prior to that? Um, we take applications at every grade from kindergarten through 10th grade for all of our programs and fundamental programs take applications from kindergarten through 12th grade. Okay, first question that I know that I have that, mm -hmm. that I've heard other parents say, okay, I choose a program that's out of my regular zone. Mm -hmm. How does my child get to and from school? So some of our programs are countywide, meaning anywhere you can live anywhere in the county and apply. Some of our programs have attendance areas and they'll be indicated in the guide. They're indicated in our information on, on our website. Um, and so you have to live in that attendance area to even apply. And so if you live in the attendance area, either the small one or the larger one, mm -hmm. um, we do provide uh, transportation, arterial transportation, which means mom or dad might have to drive their child to the bus stop. Um, they'll, they may be a little bit farther than a neighborhood stop, but we do provide transportation for um, our programs with the exception of elementary and middle school fundamental programs. Okay, now when you say drive to, I'm thinking, because we, we had four kids, we went through mm -hmm. this whole process, so sometimes you drive to another school, like we were on one side of the highway and we had to drive to Belcher Elementary right. and, and have that as, as a drop off point. Sometimes they're at a school, sometimes they're, they're just off of major roadways, they're not gonna be on a major mm -hmm. um, intersection, but they'll be a block or two off of a major intersection, so it might not be, the, um, might not be close enough for your child to walk there every day, but they'll, they won't be too terribly far from your home. So how do you find the right fit for your child? Because, you know, mm -hmm. kids don't always know what they want to do. I was one of these five-year people in college <laughs> where I was going to be a marine biologist in Iowa. Okay, not a lot of oceans in Iowa. So, uh, you know, no, I, I changed so my mind a couple <laughs> times, somehow landed in broadcasting. So mm -hmm. how, how, do you, how do you get the one that fits your child? You have to start early. I'll pick that up for you, no problem. You. Sorry. Yep. You have to start early and um, start with doing some research online. Check out our website. It is www.pcsb.org slash choice. Mm -hmm. yep. There's a ton of information on every program. Um, we had information fairs in November. We encourage families to attend those. They get to see every program. And right now, every school has a discovery night. They started in mid-November. They'll run through mid-December. Um, it's an opportunity for parents to go to an individual school and see more about that school. But if you missed a discovery night, not the end of the world. Right. Um, they're still shadowing for high school students. Schools are still giving tours. Just contact a program and ask for more information and ask for ask some questions. Because I know you said start early, and sometimes by the time these hit the air, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, ooh, early was before this was even aired, right? Right. But it's still okay to call schools and ask questions. Um, they're probably your best resource, families, um, other parents, students that are in the program, you can always call our student assignment office. We'll do the best we can to answer them, but our, our uh, schools have a phenomenal amount of information about their individual programs. Are there any c costs associated with these schools? Um, typically, no. Um, they're every once in a while, um, a student will have a field trip fee, a lab fee, something like that, but but these programs are public programs, so they're through our public schools and, and they're available to any student as long as they meet the entrance criteria if it applies and mm -hmm. as long as they're in the attendance area. So uh, next question would be, okay, so I know that in high schools, because mm -hmm. there are limited spaces for these programs, right. 
I mean, you, you may apply for something, I'm particularly thinking about the IB program, mm -hmm. and you may not get in. When will you find out if you apply for those programs whether you got in or not? So parents are actually going to make their application in January, January 4th through the 13th is this year's application window, providing they made an application during that time period. They'll log back in February 8th through the 15th to see what the status is of their application. So either they receive an invitation for their child or they receive a wait list number. Mm -hmm. um, in high schools in general, with the exception of some very overly selected programs, uh, most students do get an invitation to their first choice. Right. What about grandfathering? In other words, I have what my son or my daughter uh, mm -hmm. is in the IB program, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm only picking on IB because that's the one I'm experienced with. Right. You know, and it goes to uh, Palm Harbor, and mm -hmm. I want to know, do I have any preference now that my uh, younger child, mm -hmm. the younger sibling who's now applying, right. will get in? We do have priorities for our programs, and the one you're talking about is a sibling priority. Right. So sibling priority applies as long as the older sibling is in the same program that the younger sibling is applying for. So if a school has two programs, they have to both be interested in IB, or both one be in IB and the second one applying for yeah. IB at the same school. And both children have to be attending that same program next school year. So we're applying for 1718, so the older child would still have to be in school in 1718 in the same program. So and we do give you a leg I'm use an example. Uh, let's say you got somebody who's at a school and they're in fifth grade mm -hmm. and the younger one is in kindergarten. The fifth grader graduates, what happens to the kindergarten student? Um, the kindergartner doesn't get sibling priority at that point because the sibling but, 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 is designed but, 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 to keep He's already them spent there. a year at the school. That just seems Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so if, let's so, say, yeah, they've already been at the school for a year. Oh. There's no need to reapply. Once okay. you're in a program, you get to okay, remain in the program. That's the good thing, once you're, once you're in, once you're not. Yeah. Uh, so let's say that you, you forget. <laughs> I know. How could that happen? Right. Is the tie straight? I forgot to get it straight. Um, what do you do? Are you, uh, are, you tough miss, luck? Well, it's to a little bit. If you miss the opportunity to apply in January, we do have late applications that begin uh, March 22nd this year. So the application system is going to close on January um, 13th, and that will be the last opportunity for families to apply until March 22nd, and then we'll start taking late applications until the following December. Can I apply for multiple schools? Yes. You may. Parents can choose up to five. You don't have to choose and five. And you, you list them with your, your priorities, choices. right, what yes, they are? in the order in which they are most important to you, one being the school that you want most or the school that you want a priority. We only give priorities on first choice applications. So if you want that sibling priority, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it needs to be your first choice. If it's your second choice, there's no sibling priority anymore. So okay. we want to make sure you do that. Uh, when people have questions about this, who's the best source to go to? Because oftentimes, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, you know, these, these, this thing gets complicated, and I'm mm -hmm. only speaking from experience. So mm -hmm. the, you know, when, they're, when they're looking for advice, who do they go to? Uh, their best option is to call our student assignment office. Um, we can be reached at 588-6210 or here at, at the administration building. Um, and we do encourage families to come in, call us, talk to us, and we'll be happy to answer their questions and give them as much information as possible. Now, and here's another question, especially for the, the super highly competitive. And, mm -hmm. and IB is just not the only one. There are plenty of others. Sure. Uh, you, all of a sudden, you're on a wait list and you go, oh, no, I'm number nine. And I've had, again, once you've done these programs, people go, mm -hmm. oh, no, it's number nine. I said, you know what? They'll probably still get in. Mm -hmm. Because usually, I mean, if it's on a wait list, it just means that, for example, could you get selected for, for both of your options? You can. You can be selected for more than one option. You can receive multiple invitations, but you can only go to school in one school. So right, your child you, right. can only choose one. But because of that, though, you can understand why, because right. you're on a wait list doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Right. Because, your wait list yeah. number will change. And so... The other thing we want families to know is around February 24th, they can start calling schools and asking for an updated waitlist number. Most of the time, waitlist numbers go down or get smaller. Right. Does occasionally get larger um, as things move around with um, with some other priorities that we offer to families that have siblings, um, newly invited sibling priority. Mm -hmm. Sometimes impacts waitlist numbers because students that applied. If we had two students, in this, uh, two twins, for example, that applied to the same program, one got in, in in February and one did not, we give that second sibling a leg up to try and keep their families together. And we oh, call yeah. that newly invited sibling priority. So that sometimes impacts wait list numbers. Yeah, too. so uh, what, do you know a percentage of, and I, you, math, or you know mm -hmm. math real well, so what, what percentage of students actually take part in the choice program rather than just say, well, I'm just going to go to my zone school? Do you know? 
Um, last year we had about 22,000 um, individual applications. Um, so about 20%, 20 to 25% of our families um, will make an application. Yeah, now I, I guess that surprises me a little bit because you would think with so many choices, but maybe just people, well, and there's nothing wrong with the neighborhood yeah. schools, don't get me wrong. Well, but. once you're in a program, you don't have to apply again until you get to the next grade level oh, where you need to move. Okay. So, yeah, so in a good. year, about 20 to 25 families are making an application, but that's, um, that's not necessarily indicative of how many are participating. Most common misunderstanding people have about this. Now, this I'm digging into mm -hmm. your mind here. What, in terms of, or the most common question you get at your office. Um, most common question, how do I know what's the right choice for my child? So yeah, the research yeah, helps. Right. What, what if they change um, their mind? Changing your mind happens, um, and depending on the status of your application, we might be able to help you with it. But once you've made your application, it's it's kind of locked in. So until we get to the late application period in March, you really want to make sure that you've, you know, you've really gotten your application exactly the way you want it. However, you have the entire window from January 4th through the 13th to get your application exactly the way you want it. Families okay. can log in multiple times but during that window and log in the first day and say, okay, I put my five choices and a few days later, you know what, I changed my mind. I want my third choice is my first choice you can make changes to your application all the way through 11.59 p.m. on the 13th, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I'm sure some people like that. Okay, now we don't have a computer screen in front of, a, I almost kind of wish we did, but walk me through what am I gonna see on the computer screen when I go to do this? Let's, let, I'm walking you first, okay? I went to the PCSB website. What's the first thing I look for on the screen? So the first thing you look for on our webpage at the top is a link to registration. Registration, okay, write and that down. I'll write it down because mm -hmm. I wanna know. Registration is the first thing you look for. Okay, then and once what? you click on registration, it's going to take you to our student assignment page and there's a series of buttons at the top of the page. Two of them are, might be important to you with respect to choice. One of them says district application programs. That's where you can find all of your information about our programs. Mm -hmm. And another one says student reservation system and we want you to click on that button to make an application for a program. Okay. That's going to take you to a login screen. Under the reservation thing. Now, mm -hmm. again, how do you know, how does the system know who you are? Most of our parents have a parent ID and password, parent portal ID and password. If you don't have one, you need to get one before January. You can go into any school, doesn't have to be your child's school, doesn't even have to be the same level, just any school that is in your area or near where you work. Take a photo ID so we know that you are who you say you are. Oh, okay. And um, we'll give you a parent ID and password. You can also come to the administration building to get a parent ID and password. But that will be important for January. That's what, you, that's what parents use to log in, not their students. Focus ID, but their own parent ID. The to parent log in. ID is just signing, okay? Because I knew there was some confusion by that because they thought they had to have the students. Uh, did we cover it all? I want to make sure. I think we did. I think so. Okay, good. Yeah, do, and you know, parents, I, again, with four kids and now grandkids in the school, it's easy to freak out. Don't. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you know, take your time, look at what's going to work, and if you want to stay in your neighborhood school, there's nothing wrong with it. But now mm -hmm. let me ask you this mm -hmm. uh, let's say they choose their neighborhood school. Now mm -hmm. they're in third grade. Too late? No, you can make an application oh, anytime, anytime. Okay. to go to a program. They are more difficult to get in at upper grades yeah. or non-entry level grades. We mm -hmm. consider those kindergarten, sixth grade, and ninth grade because those are when you're entering a specific level. Right. Um, because each year, those kindergarten students are going to move yeah. forward to first grade. And so the, there are only first grade seats available if a kindergartner didn't return. So it's yeah. harder to get in at an upper grade in a level, but it's not impossible. Yeah, it's possible. All right, folks. So uh, got any questions? Call her. <laughs> Call the school board. And make sure you have one of these. you got to have one of these. So I'm sure the kid probably bought it at home and it's in their backpack. And they go, oh, yeah, look at the school. Oh, yeah, I've had that for months. Well, anyway, take a look at it and pay attention to the dates so that you don't miss out on the many opportunities you have here at Pinellas County Schools. All right, take a break, and we'll be back with more right after this. Melissa, thank you. Thank you.